So many of you guys might be transitioning into forced work from home or learning situations. And so I wanted to hop in and make a video about something that I feel like I can add value to with this and help with my tips on how to thrive on this change. Um, as someone who runs an online business and has managed remote teams, has worked from home for nearly a decade, and I actually took all of university online, I feel like I have some productivity tips that could help you guys. And so I wanted to share them. Like we've already seen these massive shifts in self-education, remote work and online learning, and society will continue heading that way. So now is a great time to get ahead and use this time productively to learn how to work this way because it's going to be coming in the future. The first one is sticking to or developing a morning routine. You want to protect your mornings. I see a lot of people, they fall into two traps when they start working or learning from home. They either wake up at whatever time they want and they say, who cares? Or they wake up and they get straight to working. So I want you to stick to a morning routine. I want you to get up as usual, be consistent. Protecting your time. You want to give energy to yourself before you give to the work. So that means grounding yourself, um, whether that's enjoying a coffee on the deck, um, going outside for a walk, journaling, um, meditating, whatever that is, control the morning. It sets a tone for the day and dictates the energy and, and the output that you will have. The next tip is a big one. This is time management. Um, people ask me if, if I learned more through my business degree or if I actually learned more through self-education and my answer is self-education. However, what I did learn through doing my business degree online, especially while I was managing beyond the national team and things like that was time management. I had all these things going on and I had to learn how to manage my time myself and figure out when was the best time for me to learn this information and actually, um, study and, and put it into practice. And so um, if you've been working at like an office or, or going to school, you've had someone else who's telling you when you're going to do things and what to do with your time. Now you have to figure that all out for yourself. So all of that time management is up to you. You have to to manage your time wisely and know when you're gonna have peak energy, when you're gonna have lower energy, and you need to plan ahead, whether this is making a calendar, a schedule, or putting it up on a whiteboard, I have a whiteboard over there. Um, whatever it is, you need to know how to um, prioritize the top main things, maybe pick two or three top main things. You know, as humans, we can't focus on a ton of stuff and then focus on those. And if you have extra time, you can get done those other little tasks. Now, if you can adapt well to this style of working and learning, it's gonna put you it's going to give you a big advantage in the long run. Being able to manage your energy and um, know when it's when it's time for you to truck through a big project, when it's time to pull back, take a break, maybe do some of the repetitive tasks that don't take as much mental energy from you. It doesn't matter what supplements or caffeine you take or whatever you do, we all have natural energy highs and dips and lows. And so knowing when those are and planning your work and um, managing your time around that is a huge skill to learn when you're working from home. Another thing that, that kind of bundles up into this time management is to prevent a lot of task switching time. There's a lot of time wasted when you're switching from task to task. It might take you 20 minutes to get into the groove of that task before you build that momentum. So you want to keep that momentum while it's going and not be switching back and forth and wasting all that time. Next up is taking breaks. Now you might be thinking, well, I have all this momentum. Why do I need to take a break? Well, if you don't take any breaks, you're going to burn out. And next you might hit a wall, especially if you're working on a creative project, you you have the creative juices flowing. And you're like, I got to keep going. All of a sudden you hit a wall and it might be hours, um, days, weeks before you get back onto that project and feel the motivation to do it again. So if you can take those five to 10 minute breaks before you feel ready, because when, or before you actually feel that you need them, because when you do feel that you need them, it's going to take you 30, 60 minutes before you can get back into the task. So if you take breaks the right way, do the right things on your break, like walking or um, just getting some fresh air or something like that, then you can really come back to the project as much or more productive than you were before and not take away that productivity. So on the breaks, I mentioned taking a walk or getting some exercise. Now, I think that is very important to stay active, especially when you're working or learning from home. You know, we're not walking to class, walking through the office or doing things like that. Um, we don't have a commute. So it's important to keep that up. Now, one thing I wanted to mention is some of us might be fans of high intensity exercise. I know I personally am, um, but sometimes that takes away my energy and it adds stress. So for me personally, I'm going to be focusing on low intensity energy or low intensity exercise because the high intensity exercise, if it's adding stress to the already mental stress I'm having about the shift, um, about what's going on in the world, that's gonna, that stress is actually going to lower my uh, immune system strength. And I want to be boosting my immune system. I want to be giving myself things that are going to help me be stronger and be able to fight this off if, if something does happen. And so you want to be giving to yourself and not taking away. So again, 
low intensity exercise is great for that. High intensity is great if that is your stress relief. Um, you know, this might all vary and it might vary day to day. So it's not just person to person. So again, listen to your body, listen to your mind and give it what it, what it needs and what you are actually feeling. So the last tip is to set boundaries. This is very important. We need to have a hard stop um, when you're working from home. It's very difficult to do, especially if you're self-employed. I know I can work into the night and, and all hours, but having a hard stop really makes me feel better the next day. It makes me more productive the next day and the week and it's sustainable in the long term. If I don't take that hard stop, then I keep doing it, I keep doing it, I have a great few days of productivity and all of a sudden I'm burnt out for like a week where I'm feeling lower on that energy. So maybe give, you know, having that hard stop where you say, I'm not gonna answer emails, I'm not gonna do my work after this time, I'm gonna spend time with family, invest in myself, read books, whatever it is that gives you back that energy. Now guys, I, I know this is a difficult time, this is a sensitive topic and it's a time with a lot of fear. And I wanted to remind you guys that the one thing that we can control is right up here. It's our reaction. It's how we, you know, um, respond to what is going on. If, if we're just being negative and we're complaining and, and we're putting out those bad vibes, it's not going to help anyone or the ones around us. Now, I don't want to diminish what you might be going through. I know you might have lost some money in the stock market, perhaps, or um, different things are going on, different factors. It's very stressful. Um, we all have elderly grandparents and people who we know who are sick, who we're worried about. Um, but again, we can only control how we react. You know, the way I'm trying to look at this is that it's a massive opportunity to take these few weeks and invest in yourself. It doesn't have to be investing money, you know, in the stock market or whatever that is. Just investing in yourself is how the, the people who have gone through these types of things in the past will go through it now and will go through it in the future, will come out ahead at all times from these kind of things. Don't let this weaken you, let it strengthen you. Take this time to read, um, invest in learning how to make content, invest in, you know, maybe starting an online business to diversify your income so that the next time this comes around, things are a little bit different. Um, whatever you do, you know, right now is such a great time for self-education, self-knowledge, and just learning the skills of how to be productive when you're learning and you're working from home will really translate into that and help you. Now, uh, I would kick myself if I didn't add this in at the end, is support your local businesses. They give back to the community all year round, and right now they might be struggling a little bit. You know, restaurants, um, shops, local things like that. Some of them do sell stuff online, and it's important for you to ask if that's what they're doing, and then you can sh uh, shift your spending to online with them, or buy a gift card or do something because these people give give to us all year round and it's a little bit harder for them to um, kind of thrive when we have these issues with the economy. Um, and again, like if you don't have anything to give right now, that's totally fine. I understand that everyone is in different positions, but if you are able to, those are the people that we should be supporting rather than kind of those big box stores. Let's stay safe, let's stay strong, and let's focus on what we can control. Honestly, that's that's all we can do.